When purpose is seen, vision is born. You know, after we released Seventh Collection, I didn't have any idea where we were going with Eighth. There was no direction, there was no conviction, there was no instinct. The heaviest thing I had on my spirit was eternal. And we executed that after Seventh. At that time, I just really felt Fashion was really loud, and everything felt very transactional. All the collections and pieces felt like they lived in a trend cycle or like a time capsule. And I really wanted to create something that people could, could love and hold on to, you know, beyond season. Around that time, I came across a few references that really felt directional for what I could do with Eighth. And once I felt like I had a picture of that in my head of what it could be, is kind of when the process began. The process of design is different for everyone. For me, I'm a little unorthodox. Some things start from a sketch, some things start from a reference, some things start from a shape. I'm kind of chasing a feeling. Come on, man. Somebody stop playing with me, man. How does this thing make you feel? What does this thing feel like when it's just by itself? For me, I'm chasing something that is so authentic to who I am that I don't necessarily have to study it. You know, being self-taught and, and kind of learning this practice in front of the world, I may not have the best systems or the best processes in place to get to the finish line, but I trust where I want to go. I'm proud to have our brand founded in Los Angeles and felt it was important to have an authentic conversation around our first live show. I just wanted to have a show that way. To give it all the place in Los Angeles is the Hollywood Bowl. It's like the last tasteful, iconic location in LA. If we ever have anything to say, this would be where we have to say it. When you are fighting for something beyond yourself or fighting for something greater than yourself, you understand that what you give to that fight is the cost. You know, if we're starting like, hey, this is the sneaker we want, hundreds of rounds of shape, trying to get the shape right, go through tons of rounds of trying to get the materials right, tons of rounds of trying to get the color right. I'm not designing for a specific window of time. I'm designing to land a product that you're gonna to wanna to keep for a long time. And so to me, it doesn't matter when that product comes out. What matters is, does this live up to the promise of the intention of what this idea was? If I make beautiful product, I know that the culture will take it and multiply that by 10. You don't have to create something that is like in and of itself and by itself 
so beautiful. You kind of have to leave a little bit of room for the kid to put the kid into the product to give it a different context. You can't design too far into it that restricts the potential of what the product can become. If you want to do something sturdy, strong, like that boot, you have to work into another direction. Yes, but it's possible. If I try and control the conversation, the conversation is only going to go so far. What am I doing with this opportunity? What am I doing with this platform? What am I saying with this platform? And so it puts a different level of responsibility against the voice, against the collection, against the story, against everything that comes from the house of fear of God. That gave me a level of responsibility that I've, I've yet to feel. I can nitpick on every single detail, but I know if like the spirit doesn't show up, this thing isn't gonna pierce the way it needs to pierce. I gotta leave room for like God to show up. My grandma used to pick cotton. I have the luxury to literally thumb through fabrics and pick the cotton I want. It's like the dust Ooh, that hides the glow of a rose. But I, can't, I could never do that if she did it first. What good am I? If you understand like the price that she had to pay and and many others had to pay then how could you call anything less than what you're doing luxury my definition of american luxury is simply the, the luxury to be yourself. It's the freedom to be the, the best version that God has called you to be. It's an aspiration, you know, to be in that place where you're free to be who you want to be. And you have the opportunity to be the best version of that. We can authentically have a point of view through our main line, through tailoring, that only we can have. When you have a vision, there's no competition. No one can compete with a vision. I, I, I don't want to be in the conversation. 
I'm not in your conversation. I'm something different. I'm talking about that. Oh.